Hello to all the new officers out there that are either on their probationary status, just walked in the door this week, or are still in the academy. Hello to all of you. And today I'd like to talk about some things for you to think about. We would love for you to stay and make this a career. And I want to talk about some of the things uh, you need to be aware of, look for. And one of the things we'll talk about today is negativity from fellow officers, how to avoid that and work with a positive attitude. Hello, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe if you like this video. Okay, so you're brand new and you've picked corrections as a job that you're interested in, a job you would like to do. And you've never worked with convicted felons before. And you could be anywhere from 19 years old all the way to 50 years old. I've seen people finish military careers and come into corrections. I've seen people finish carpentry and come into corrections. I've seen people uh, finish uh, as drywallers and, and construction workers and finish a career in that and then come into corrections. So we get all types of people. So you go through a training academy, of course, where we want to give you the basics, the basic knowledge of what you're going to do. And then when you step foot behind those gates, behind that razor wire and the real world hits you in the face, you are relying not only on your trainer or your training at the facility to help get you through and help you understand what's going on. You need to know a few things on what to look out for and what to do yourself because you will be tested on every side of the coin. You'll be tested by the inmates hourly, daily, weekly, and through your whole career and they will try to manipulate you. You will be tested by some of your co-workers. Yes, it's not a, a fairy tale land where everybody gets along, but the one thing you must always remember is when the going gets tough, no matter what you think of your coworker, we all better be there to help our coworker. So let's start with the inmates. The inmates know you're new and they're looking for several things. They're looking at how you wear your uniform. They are looking at how you walk. They are looking at how you talk. They are looking at how serious you are about your job. They are looking if you have confidence or they are looking if you have low self-esteem. They will size you up in all these ways and decide whether or not they can come over and get you to give them half of your sandwich from your lunchbox, maybe a piece of gum, maybe something as small as a piece of candy. You do that and it's over. You have already broken the law. In Florida, under Florida Statute 944.47, food is considered introduction of contraband. So a piece of candy is contraband. Remember, if it's not issued by the facility for the inmates or approved by the facility management for the inmates, it is contraband, period. Don't let any inmate talk you into giving them anything. Yes, a $1 pocket-sized notebook from the dollar store is contraband. Bring one of those to an inmate who is begging to have something to write his daily notes on or write his poetry on or whatever. You have conduct, uh, con, uh, conducted a felony offense. You have just brought in a notebook for an inmate. Do not allow that to happen. Never give an inmate anything they are not allowed. Learn what firm, fair, and consistent is and find your alley. You are going to learn from many different officers on how to do the job, how to handle inmates. You will do the job, your performances, your daily performances should be really simple. You will read and learn and follow the policies and procedures of your agency and you will conduct your daily duties by following those. Now, everybody knows there's a policy and procedure and there's an old joke. There's the prison policy and procedure and there's a way we really do it. Well, you know, that's somewhat true, but be very, very careful, okay? Every incident can be different and you may have to vary a little bit, but... 
just remember if you are being investigated and, or your prison management is looking at you for a decision you made, they will use that policy and procedure manual and that's what they are going to go by. Did he or she follow policy and procedure? Let's hope that the management remembers where they came from and they see that you can sway a little here and a little there. You don't have a lot of wiggle room now in some cases. So do everything by the policy and procedure, understanding that every incident may not be the same. Now, so that's the best way to handle your daily uh, duties and performances. Now, when you learn one week with Officer Jones, one week with Officer Smith, and then the third week uh, with Officer uh, Wilhelm, they're all going to be conducting their business along the lines of the policy and procedures, but everybody has their own little touch, their own little way of talking to the inmates, their own little way of handling a problem. When an inmate, inmate is uh, escalated to the fullest and is tempered, there are some officers that can use uh, verbal skills to de-escalate, which is always the best. If you can de-escalate an incident verbally, hey, we all go home safe at night. If you cannot de-escalate the inmate, then we will have to use of force, okay, will have to take place and be sure to follow your agency's policy and procedure on use of force. There's so many things you have to watch out for, okay? Remember, when you've got the inmate down and he is stopped and he is handcuffed or she is handcuffed, that's it. So many officers every year are on the evening news on a video punching an inmate that is face down handcuffed. He's resisting, he's resisting. Well, yes, they may be resisting, but we can pick them up, one on each side. We can use pressure points. We can use a lot of things. Anyway, you're going to learn all that. I'm just trying to get some ideas out. So you don't lose your job over ego, over I'm going to get you back, over I'm going to show you inmate. It's not worth it. We have had several officers go down in the state of Florida in 2019 in handcuffs, unfortunately, very sad, for letting their ego destroy their career. And some of these folks have been lieutenants, one lieutenant, a couple of captains, a sergeant, and some officers. It's not worth it, folks. Why? Why lose everything over an inmate? And then you get to see the inmates celebrate like they've done a victory. Uh, they're doing their victory warrior dance. We got rid of another one. See, it's all manipulation, and that's what they want to do. Get you in trouble. Just trying to give you some examples. Now, when you're learning from these officers, you have to be your own man or your own woman as well. Learn everything. Take it in. Listen. Don't be the know-it-all. Don't come in, I know everything, and I already know it. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I've had, I've had officers, and you try to tell them something, young officers still on probation, say, well, look, you, I even start out with, you can do it the way you want, but I just want to suggest. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know this already. I know this already, you know. Nothing disturbs a, a senior officer more than a know-it-all. And vice versa, you know, uh, some of the new trainees uh, have complained about getting an officer that knows it all and is teaching them all the ways to get in trouble. So that's why you have to be smart. You have to be the decision maker. Take what everybody tells you. And if you like some of what Officer Jones does, you like some of what Officer Smith does, that's fine. Use it. But form your own. You are your own person. Form your own way of working but take some of these advices take some of these tips from these officers they, they know what they're talking about they've been around for a while don't ignore those and then implement your own style with it and you could come out to be a really good officer now let's talk about the negativity officer saying what are you crazy man you might as well get out of here now while you still got a chance you're still on probation get out of here this job sucks I hate this job. And listen to who's talking to you. Many of those people talking to you and telling you that 
have 15, 20 years. I know some people that have 25 years of talk that way. Now, wait a minute. I would look at them and think, you're still here. Why? You know, so take everything with a grain of salt. You decide. You know whether you can handle this job. Yes, it does take a certain type of person to handle this job. You have to be thick-skinned. You have to let words roll off your chest when you're called names by inmates or your family members are called names by inmates or they go that one step further to threaten your family. Don't use words. Use the mighty sword, the mighty pen. Write them up, get them a disciplinary report, and let's lock them up in confinement if they're making threats to us. That will hurt the inmate worse because they want you to come after them. They, in many cases, they want you to come after them. And there'll be people that are going to watch us and say, that's not true because they hate to hear it when you say the inmates want you to come after them. Some of them do. Not all of them, no. For sure not all of them. But the ones that are manipulating you and, and luring you into their trap, they'll say everything they can to try to get you to come after them. And use the mighty pen, unless they're coming after you, of course. If you're being attacked, you're going to defend yourself. Let's get that out and, and done with. And you'll learn that from your uh, senior officers. You're going to get attacked. You're going to defend yourself, period. But the ones that are trying to lure you to come after them with words, don't let it happen. Be stronger than the words and let the pen be mightier than the sword. And uh, you decide for yourself. When these negative officers tell you these things, think about it. They're very close to getting to the end of their career, many of these guys that are telling you this. They're getting ready to collect a pension for the rest of their life. No, nobody said you're going to be rich, but let me give an example of me. 28.5 years, I'm collecting a monthly pension, a paycheck every month. I did what we call the drop program in Florida, and you can do 401k. Make sure you do something. Do some type of savings on the side for a nest egg. So I have my pension. I have my little nest egg for five years in Florida, which is called the drop when you stay an extra five years. And uh, they give you um, partial money plus your paycheck. And that builds into a nice nest egg. And then I'll have my Social Security in a year. So I'll be a triple dipper, so to speak. See, this is what you have to think about the future your medical, your dental, and your future. Now, you can be a job jumper and do corrections for a year and get out and say, I hate it, and go to construction, go to drywall, go to painting, but if, or go to IT. I know a lot of guys are going to IT, and I'm not, that's a good job. I know guys that have left and gone to UPS making good money. But listen, somewhere down the line, you're going to have to stop and say, I must make a career of something, or one day you're going to wake up too old and say, I have no pension. I'm not vested anywhere. I've job jumped all my life. I spent my 401k because that's how I made my house payments. I had to borrow from it all the time. Or I spent my drop money. Well, that's after you retire. But anyway, you get the picture. You've got to make a decision. So make that decision within your first three, five years in corrections. If you feel this is just not for me, hey, we can't blame you. It's not for everybody. But if you feel that this is something you can handle and go through it, don't let the negative people talk you into getting out of the business. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying to stay. I'm not saying go. I'm saying be your own person. Use your own mind. And don't let negative influence talk you into a wrong decision. I was told a lot of times in those 28.5 years, man, this place sucks. Man, this place. And I listened. Some days I thought that to myself. Some days. But think about this. Any job is that way. Any job that is that way. Of course, you have to know the truth. Some jobs won't have spit, urine, and feces being thrown at you on occasion. Some jobs don't have violent inmates attacking you. That's true. You have to have thick skin and a hard shell to do this job. So I just want to throw a few things out there. And I've just randomly picked a few things off the top of my head. Um, 
you can move in rank. There is one more thing I want to tell you for sure. You can move in rank in corrections. If you have a decent head on your shoulders, common sense, you come to work on time, you do your job, you can move up in this career. You can move from officer to sergeant to lieutenant very quickly, even captain. And then I have friends that are regional directors now in Florida that work with me when we first started out. Regional directors, wardens, some of them are wardens now. It, it just depends on what you want to do. Some people love just to be the correction officer and finish the career that way, maybe make sergeant. Some people finish a whole 25, 30 year career and never make rank because they don't want to. They just want to be a correction officer and that's fine. But the opportunity for uh, promotion is there. So I suggest if you don't want to get stale burned out or bored, you use those opportunities to get promoted and move to different positions. It makes your career go by faster. I went from a correctional officer to felony probation officer to felony probation officer two to senior prison inspector. And then I jumped over to the sheriff's department uh, as a slick sleeve again. Then I made master deputy. And then I did a little bit of training at the training center and it just, and then I went to the boot camp for the juvenile boot camp as a drill instructor. And then I went to bailiff. My gosh, before I knew it, my 28.5 years was gone and I'm an old guy now. You know, that's the difference than just staying in one spot and being stale. Within your institution, try to move to different jobs. Move from correctional officer in the dorm to, um, uh, administration, you know, uh, uh, admin shift where you'd be doing different tasks for the inmates. Think of different jobs that are within your prison system and put in for them and get them all under your belt while you're young. And then when you put in for sergeant, oh my gosh, worked in the uh, uh, control room, worked in the dorm, worked on the admin shift, worked outside squad, worked uh, DOT with the inmates. Uh, lots of little jobs there that you can take to break up the monotony in your career. So there's a few things you need to keep in mind, but just keep a positive attitude. Don't let the negativity get to you. All right. That's my new guy, new girl speech. There's a lot of terms that are going to go your way. Please have a hard shell. There are some pranks that some of the uh, senior officers are going to play on you. Hey, it happened in the Army. It happens with me in the Army and in Corrections. And the more you get angry at these little pranks, uh, the more they're going to do it to you, okay? So go along with the flow. Have fun with it. It's funny. I laugh at it. As long as these pranks aren't putting you in a dangerous position. If they are putting you in a dangerous position, don't run to your sergeant or captain. Hey, they're teasing me. They put me in debt. Go to them first. Go to the officer first. Say, hey, guys, this is, this is kind of funny, but you could have had me hurt there. You know, talk to the officers first. Don't be running off to your sergeants and captain. At least try to talk to them first about it and see where it goes from there. If that doesn't work, then you do what you have to do. But uh, you'll earn more respect by going to your fellow officers face to face and working it out among them. Okay. All right. A uh, few tips. You can add questions at the bottom. If there's things that I didn't cover and you're, it's in your mind, Add questions at the bottom of this YouTube. We'll throw it out there and get some answers and hopefully get some other people to jump in with some answers. Thanks a lot. Gary York, True Prison Stories.